So of course the concern is that we enter into a hype bubble, and we certainly have. You know, there's a lot of hype about quantum computing and quantum technologies. Um, you know, you, you read about some you know fantastic discovery every day in the news that's going to revolutionize quantum computing, and of course. Um, what that masks is the, the steady progress that we've been making uh, continuously over the last 10 or 20 years. Um, this is hard technology, and it's going to take a long time. You know, just like the first uh, you know, transistor-based computers in the 50s, it's, it was a good 40 years to get from there to the 90s or even to the 2000s where we are today. Um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but sometimes we can get lost in the hype. Um, and part of the Center for Quantum Engineering's purpose is to help companies understand uh, where that differentiation is between what's hype and what's reality um, and give a clear picture of where quantum information is going and on what time scale you can expect it to happen. Quantum computing is in its infancy. We're just starting. And um, you know, an, an analogy that I like to use is that um, you know, the recent demonstration of quantum supremacy at Google um, is basically a Kitty Hawk moment. And so it gives a perspective that, you know, there are some very important demonstrations in quantum computing that are happening right now. Um, but we also need to keep the perspective that it takes time and it takes engineering to turn these first demonstrations into useful, practical machines. Sure. So we established the Center for Quantum Engineering in February of 2019 and the Associated Industrial Consortium came online in the summer of 2019. Um, and, and since then we've had a number of companies sign up already um, from, from all walks of life. We've had companies from the automobile industry. Of course we've had companies who are actually building quantum computers themselves. But we also have companies who are building um, the pieces that might be associated with a quantum computer, like the electronics that control quantum computers or the uh, optics that control quantum computers. And then we have a number of companies that are potentially users of quantum computers. They're not trying to build a quantum computer themselves, but they're trying to understand how is a quantum computer going to affect my bottom line in 10 or 20 years. Um, and in fact, if my, my, my guess is that in the end we'll have more of those types of companies joining because there of course will be a few companies that are building quantum computers, but there are going to be many, many more companies that actually use quantum computers. So of course, you know, one strategy is to just sit back and wait and say, I'm going to wait until a real quantum computer exists and then I'm going to go use that quantum computer to do something. And, and I can understand that strategy. But, but what I would say to that is that, look, you know, even if we have a small quantum computer today, it's not large enough to do or solve the problem that you have, but it's large enough that we can develop an algorithm which is going to address your problem. Um, if you sit back and wait, chances are your competitor is not going to sit back and wait. And your competitor is going to uh, figure out what algorithms are viable on a quantum computer and solve um, real world problems. And they're going to test it on these small quantum computers where it's not yet at scale, but in 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 years it will be at scale. And of course if, they, if that becomes their IP or they patent that, you know, downstream you're going to have to license that technology from them. And you may not want to have to do that. Um, and in some cases, we don't know what these algorithms are yet, right? The IP today is wide open. And, um, you know, I tell and encourage companies to jump in now because there's so much IP that's waiting to be generated. And you could be the one that generates it.